From the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Kirk Smith. Wednesday's top stories. Police explaining why they were forced to shoot a couple's wheeling man in the Chippingham area here in the capital yesterday morning, releasing a statement following the incident saying he failed to comply with orders for him to put the cutlers down and actually charged that police. The man was shot several times, taken to hospital where he died. It's the second fatal police involved shooting in less than a week. The matter has now been turned over to the coroner for further investigation. That fire is still burning at the scrap metal site near the dump here in the capital, but police officials say it's now pretty much under control and there's no threat to the landfill itself. There's still some smoke in the area for residents to deal with, but that should be gone in time. Several speakers in the House yesterday as debate on the budget continues. Opposition leader Davis among them. He accused the Minnesota administration of incompetence in a number of areas, including responses to Hurricane Dorian and the coronavirus pandemic. Davis says the government mismanaged Dorian from the start, describing the response as, among other things, embarrassing. The House expected to have a full day of debate on the budget today, and the exercise could end this week in the House. This is news break from the Tribune News Network. Prime Minister Minnis is scheduled to speak in the House tomorrow, and he's expected to announce some major changes to coronavirus restrictions, including new measures for fully vaccinated people. Already concerns being expressed about policing those proposed changes, but National Security Minister Dame seems to think the police can handle it. He told reporters they will adjust and will make it work. A 42-year-old New Providence man and a 57-year-old New Providence woman, the latest coronavirus victims, both died earlier this month. 239 total deaths now, and there's still 28 under investigation. Latest confirmed cases numbers from the Ministry of Health, 15 new ones reported for Tuesday. There's still some 700 active cases out there. 38 persons remain in hospital, four of them in the ICU. Closing arguments have been completed in the Shantytown Challenge in the Supreme Court. Justice Cheryl Grant Thompson now has a ruling to make. The Equinor Company in Grand Bahama says it is making progress in the cleanup of that Hurricane Dorian oil spill on the island. The company says there's still some remediation work to do, though. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper on the streets first thing in the morning. Stay up to date online at Tribune242.com. Now the Tribune's AccuWeather update, a service of insurance management. That weather system to the north still impacting the weather in the area. Mostly cloudy skies. Could be some showers in the area. Highs in the mid to upper 80s. 88 at Freeport, 88 in the capital, 87 at Matthew Town. No marine advisories. Winds generally 10 to 15 knots. The sea is 2 to 4 feet. Low tide now. The next high around 2 this afternoon. Partly cloudy skies expected tonight, lows from the mid to upper 70s, maybe some low 80s. No systems in the tropics to be concerned about right now. If you need additional weather information, check the Tribune's weather page. For your insurance needs, call Insurance Management. We are now in the hurricane season. Insurance Management urges you to complete your preparations and ensure that your home and contents coverage is up to date. Call them today. With more than 40 years in business, Nobody does it better than insurance management. This is News Break from the Tribune News Network. Looking for a home, lot, or condo? Then pick up a copy of the Tribune's Home Buyer's Guide. Every Monday, your number one source for homes, condos, lots, and home care needs. Open the door to your dream home. Plumbers, electricians, tilers, and contractors. It's the perfect place to advertise your business. Call us today at 502-2356 to book your space in the Bahamas' leading newspaper. The Tribune, the people's newspaper. Wednesday's World News headlines the world is watching as U.S. President Biden and Russian President Putin meet face-to-face in Geneva and Switzerland. It's not clear what will come out of that meeting. U.S. officials say the president is merely trying to establish common ground and likes to do it face-to-face. They have it under control, but the U.S. has passed another coronavirus milestone, more than 600,000 deaths, same amount that die from cancer in that country every year. Weather issues for the U.S. Also, they have major heat problems in the western part of that country. Temperatures in some parts hitting triple digits, and it's expected to be around for a while. Tribune's cash tracker prices, middle of the week, Shell 491, SO 501, Rubus 501, no changes. 
Now your sports notes brought to you by the Tribune Sports Section. There's an update on our girls' national tennis team, complete with pictures in the Tribune Sports. Latest on the Olympic Games preparation. Find out how they propose to handle things in Tokyo. Jazz and the Marlins lose in St. Louis last night in Major League Baseball. Read about that and get the rest of the MLB news. There's a WNBA update in the Tribune Sports also, not featuring John Quell Jones, who's in Europe away from the league for a tournament there. For all of your sports details, you want to check the Tribune Sports section. Everything you need from the world of sports, you'll find in the Tribune Sports. And that's your news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper on the streets first thing in the morning. Stay up to date online all day at Tribune242.com. <laughs> 